In this video, I'm going to be discussing voltage normalization for a bobbin coil probe for testing tubing. Then we're going to discuss why we normalize voltage, how we normalize voltage. And then we're going to talk about span settings and volts per division. Voltage normalization and volts per division are two totally different things, so don't get those confused. This is a typical ASME calibration standard. It's got some ID pits, and then it's got 100% through all hole, and then it's got a 60% through all hole, and then it's got the 420s. Right now, it says 4 volts because I had already set that. So let me go in there and mess it up a little bit. Let me set it to like 92.6 volts. Okay. So we're just going to pretend that this is an unnormalized signal because it's just got some <clears throat> some weird number in there, right? So if you don't normalize voltage, whatever this value is here, it's going to be arbitrary, right? It's not going to mean much. This number only means something if you set a specific signal up to a certain amplitude. So the ASME code typically has you setting the signal from the 420s to 4 volts. So to adjust it, you'll just click in your list of you. Now this is core star software. So if you're using some other version of software, you might have to do it a little differently, but for the core star, you just click your left button in the list of you and it puts these peak to peak measurement points here. And it's just measuring that distance, right? Or that amplitude. So right now it's 92 volts. That's just an arbitrary number. So to set the voltage to four volts, like the ASME code requires, you just click on this volts button here and you just go and type in what you want. So it's four volts. Now it still says 92, but I have to go and reselect my ball. So when I did that, now it's four volts. Now, if you go back into the voltage setting, you can see you can, you can set four volts on every single channel for that signal, or you could do a ratio. So if you use the ratio, channel one where you set it will be four volts, and then like your mix might be 2.75 volts, and all the other channels are going to be a little bit different relative to uh, the frequency response for uh, the channel that you set your volts on. So now that we set it to four volts, now we're going to talk about volts per division. So again, the, the voltage of a signal is based on how you normalize your voltage, but Volts per division is just another way of saying span. And that's, you know, just making the gain larger or smaller to adjust the size of your signal. Now, what do I mean by that? <clears throat> Let's just take this signal. And I'm going to adjust the span. And let's see here. A lot of times people will they'll adjust that to full screen height. Now we already know this four volts, right? Cause we set it to four volts. And if I put the grid up here so you can look at the span, there's 10 divisions in the vertical direction. So we already know the signal's four volts, right? And then if you divide that by 10 divisions, that's 0.4 volts per division. That's a pretty, pretty hot span, right? Now in some versions of software, it would also put that number right here, 0.4 V slash D, 0.4 volts per, di per division. Now let's say I make that signal less hot, like only 50% screen height, right? So now you take four volts and then you divide it by five divisions, right? That's half of 10 divisions. This 0.8 volts per division, that's not as hot. You're gonna miss some of the tiny flaws, right? And just to further drive the point home, let's bring that guy down to about one vertical division. And I got four volts divided by one equals, that's four volts per division. That's a horrible span. You'll never find small flaws like that. Now, why would somebody prefer to use a setting of 0.4 volts per division? rather than just say set some flaw to like you know 80 percent screen height well i'm going to explain why because some people think 
or some procedures have you first taking the signal from your 100% hole, which is that. Now remember, I changed the rotation on that 100. So let's see. That's the 100 right there. Okay, so let me change that back to where it should be, which is right, right, 40 degrees, right? Thumbs out, 40 degrees. So you got the 160 and the 20. Some procedures have you counting the divisions when your signal phase is calibrated correctly. Well, there's a big difference in the amplitude of that signal. If I do it at the calibrated phase and then adjust it to 100% full screen height, that signal's a lot bigger than if I were to rotate the signal straight vertical. You know, now I have to span it down to get it to be 100% screen height. And because different procedures may have you, some people, you know, you set the span at the correct phase and other people will set the signal straight vertical like this. People don't do it the same way. It's not consistent. So in the nuclear world for doing steam generator tubing, it's most common to just calibrate the phase of all your signals and then just go plug in uh, whatever the qualified span is for that specific um, ETSS examination technique specification sheet. You know, so in the steam generator world, they use um, techniques that are qualified, right? They know that they work for a specific type of um, damage mechanism. They know the sizing performance is correct. And again, I'm talking while I'm doing this here, so I got to make sure I got the, there's a hundred percenter again. So steam generator volts per division or span, if you want to call it that, is typically 0.2 volts per division. That's super hot. So what does that look like on the 20 percenter? There's the 20 percenter. 0.2 volts per division is probably something about like that. So what's that? I don't know. Is that 200% screen height? So we'll take uh, four volts divided by 20 divisions, 0.2 volts per division. But see, if you, if you use the volts per division method of setting your gain, everybody will do it the same. So it's much more uh, repeatable uh, than just using a span like set this signal to 100% screen height because some people do it at the calibrated phase and some people will set their signal vertical. And you can imagine when you do it that way, you know, you can be comparing apples to oranges. So hopefully this video uh, made it a little more clear the difference between regular span settings and volts per division, and then also why we normalize our voltage. You know, y'all want to normalize the voltage the same as all your buddies out there in the industry. So if somebody calls you up and said, hey, we just found a 10 volt crack in the free span, you'll go, wow, that's pretty big. The only reason you know it's big is because you all set voltage the same way. All right. Hope that cleared it up. Thanks for watching the video.